Welcome to our 2.3 lecture on ethical standards in forensic science. Yeah, I'm not going to actually continue on with this puppet. A lovely student made this puppet. It's very nice. Oh, okay. okay, so ethical standards in forensic science. You will need to take notes on this quiz because there will be another open note quiz. You have three different choices for taking notes. You can either take Cornell notes um, or you can choose one of the two different options that I gave you for printout. Um, and you can bring those in with you uh, to take the quiz. So let's start talking about ethics in forensic science. First thing is our objectives. These are the four things when we get done with this subunit that you should at least have a greater picture of being able to do. You should be able to summarize the ethical standards of a forensic scientist. That's what this main presentation is about. You need to understand this fully. Um, Reevaluate the methods of processing and in analyzing trace evidence commonly found in a crime scene. We're going to talk about how they do that well. Um, recognize the procedures of evidence collection while maintaining the integrity of a crime scene. We'll touch on this a little bit as we talk about um, chain of custody and explore the history and legal responsibilities of forensic science. Okay, so forensic science is this an interesting science because it is a combination of both the legal world uh, and the scientific world. And so it deals with legal matters and legal questions. If there is no law aspect, there is really no forensic science because that forensic portion is really dealing with the law. However, um, there are both significant elements with forensic science in both resolving civil and criminal matters. And so as far as forensic science goes, there's not a difference between a criminal case uh, when you are actually analyzing evidence or if it is a civil case. You know, say it's something like a criminal case where there's been a murder that has taken place um, and you are analyzing evidence, or if it's a civil case and say you're a forensic scientist who's working with an insurance company. Um, there's really no difference in the way that you're going to go about your job. And so when we're dealing with, especially with the criminal cases, um, your main uh, objective is to either link or exonerate suspects. Okay, So the work that you're doing could actually put somebody in jail, but it also could prove someone's innocence. And so it has a great deal of weight to it in trying to do it well. Okay, um, as we already talked about, there's no distinction between civil uh, and criminal uh, when we're talking about forensic science and the legal system. Uh, the principle and procedures of the forensic science investigation are the same for both. And here are the main three things when we're dealing with evidence. You need to know these, hint, hint, um, that your job as a forensic scientist is to recognize evidence, preserve it, and analyze it. Okay, we'll go into more detail about each of those in just a moment. The balance of legal and ethical responsibilities. Science is all about observation of natural phenomena. We talked about that at the beginning of the year. However, law is about man-made rules and, and regulations, so we have to combine the two. As a scientist, you need to be both familiar with the law, but you must appreciate the rules of evidence. Okay, so there's both sides to it. Okay, your legal responsibilities. Take away ethics aside, this is what the law requires of you. Follow your procedures, obey the rules of evidence, chain of custody like we'll talk about, maintain impartiality. That means that you are not, um, you don't like lean a particular way before you go in and look at your evidence, okay? You remain impartial. And then you stay within the legal and scientific boundaries that are already set up. This uh, comment down at the bottom. This is very important. As a matter of fact, while it's not probably a blank on your notes, you need to star it because I guarantee it will come up either on the quiz or the test. Report what you observe, whatever you find, no matter what you believe. Okay, Nothing in your own personal uh, opinion can come up. It's report what you observe, whatever it is you find, no matter what you believe to be true. Okay, The character of a forensic scientist. You need to be unprejudiced and impartial. Okay, this is difficult for us as human beings. We all have our certain prejudices. We all have our certain impartialities. But you must do your best to completely cut that out of your job. You need to be completely objective uh, and be able to look at the cold, hard facts. And you also need to be educated and trained well. Main functions. These are the three things we talked about. You analyze. You need to be able to scientifically analyze or and to unearth factual information regardless which side the evidence supports. OK? 
Okay, so you can't come in thinking, oh, I think this is how a crime took place and try to make the evidence go that way. You have to analyze it and with factual information. Interpret. You then evaluate your findings and you arrive at opinions and conclusions that are based on the evidence you have. Okay, you don't try to fit the evidence into what you already believe. And then when you actually are called to report, which a lot of forensic scientists in different capacities are called into a courtroom, you testify accurately and truthfully. Okay, here are some key terms that you have got to know. Uh, we won't go through all these in detail, but we do need to know forensic science. It's the application of science to the criminal and civil laws that are enforced by, pol by police agencies in a criminal justice system. Okay, you need to know that. It's the application of science and law. Ethics, uh, since we're talking about ethics, we probably want to look at that. It's a, it's a philosophy. Okay, It's dealing with uh, values relating to human conduct, basically trying to determine what is bad and what is good within a given system. So when we're talking about the ethics of forensic science, we're saying, okay, what is a good practice for a forensic science scientist and what is a bad practice for a forensic scientist? Physical evidence, any object that can establish that a crime has been committed or can link a crime to its victim or perpetrator, chain of custody. You've heard me mention this a couple of times, and it's going to be so important as we start looking at crime scenes. Um, this is the chronological documentation of what happens to evidence from the crime scene to the lab to the safe locker, wherever it ultimately goes. You have to track it the entire way. If evidence gets lost, if the paper trail ends or is incomplete, it cannot be used. And so chain of custody is very important. Um, rules of evidence. Okay, this basically governs where and how you can actually use evidence in a, in a court trial. Impartiality, we talked about this, is not partial or biased. Your testimony is your statement or declaration um, that you make under oath in court. And then as an expert witness, which we might even do some stuff with being an expert witness, well, we might uh, mesh with some of our law enforcement uh, classes and use some of our forensic students as expert witnesses. Um, you then present your findings, your unbiased findings, to a court. Um, chain of custody decided to appear again, all right? but you do need to know the American Academy of Forensic Science. Um, this is the largest forensic science organi organization. Generally, we follow uh, the AAFS's uh, statement of ethics or code of ethics. Um, however, some people might use regional uh, organizations. There's also the um, American Board of Criminalistics. Uh, among others. And then preservation is to keep possession or uh, to uh, retain for safekeeping. Okay, that's preserving evidence. Okay, professional standard. All right, I know that some of this stuff might seem a little bit dry to you, but we need to, and we'll try to, to show how it applies in our, in our class. It's very important that there is a professional standard. Assessment is needed to standardize the collection, examination, and analysis of physical evidence. You have to have a certain procedure of how things take place. Because if not, if one lab does something completely different than another lab, uh, then that could actually you know, harm the evidence that's being used. And so there needs to be a standard way that evidence is collected and analyzed. Ethical guidelines for analyzing physical evidence. You need to actually examine it adequate, adequately. You're not just like, yeah, done. Okay. Um, interpret and evaluate the findings. Do not excessively test an item to try to enhance the results. Okay. Um, meaning that if you, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to think of, of, a, of a good example, and I, and I guess I really can't think of one off the top of my head. Um, but you wouldn't, let's say you test a certain. Uh, DNA sample, okay, and it comes back one way. You wouldn't keep testing that sample over and over and over again because you think that it's another person who did it, okay? Um, use valid and reliable standards of comparison and use accurate, reliable equipment, okay? You want to use good equipment while you're doing it. Okay, don't confuse scientific facts with opinion. Remember, the evidence speaks for itself. You cannot then speak for the evidence. Um, Qualify and explain opinions and conclusions appropriately. And so at the end of it all, once you have stated the facts, if there is an opinion that is based on those facts, then you can state that. Um, don't state conclusions and opinions beyond the areas of personal expertise. 
Uh, if you are a toxicologist, you would not start talking about tool marks, okay? That's not your area. And then give proper weight and certainty to opinions and conclusions, as we already said. Okay, reporting. Okay, last one was analyzing. The, now we're talking about reporting it. Um, personal interest or gain should not be biased. Okay, so don't be biased. Don't claim accomplishments that are not your own. Um, limit your conclusions to what you actually dealt with and, and use, and avoid misleading and ambiguous languages and terms easily misconstrued. Okay, when speak clearly whenever you're actually giving a report. Um, use accepted standards for photographs. Okay, um, meaning that, and also don't distort or unduly sens uh, use sensational material. If you, a lot of times forensic scientists will come in and they will have photos of the, some of the things that they have been researching. So, say you have a um, a photograph, you wouldn't have a giant caption at the bottom that says guilty. Okay. Because the jury is going to look at it and they're just going to say, ah, that dude thinks he's guilty. Okay, you, you don't do stuff like that. Um, Attorney-client relationship applies. And basically what that means is you cannot, you cannot talk about a court case outside of, uh, outside of your job. Okay, so you don't just go home and say, hey, check it out. Let me tell you everything about these cases that I'm working on. Uh, and also set a reasonable fee for your services, never contingency. Uh, you wouldn't do something like a DNA analysis and it's like, if it comes out a certain way, you get paid differently. Okay, you would never do that. Professional courtesy among your other forensic scientists and in the law itself. Uh, you re-examine evidence if it's permissible. You know, say that that the court wants you to, or it's a civil case, they want you to re-examine the evidence. You do that if that's allowed. Um, even if a family comes to you and wants to you to look at evidence again. Uh, you resolve differences of opinion before the case goes to trial. If you are in a disagreement with your team, you resolve that and you figure out what actually happened before you take that to trial. And then advising attorneys about the testimony of other forensic scientists is permissible and if in good faith, not malicious, and to prevent incompetent testimony. You can talk to other lawyers about a case that's going on only if you're under the impression that injustice is going to take place. Cue that because there might be, there actually might be a, a bonus question about that on the, on the test that we're going to have here pretty soon. Um, you're always looking for justice to be served. True impartial justice. Okay. Inform your colleagues. If there's a new method for analyzing things well, inform your colleagues about that. Uh, if somebody is doing things that is invalid or unreliable, you report it. Uh, you respect your opinions and conclusions of colleagues unless you can prove them false. So it can't just be like, that guy over there smells, so I don't believe anything that his lab has to say. Okay, And you don't misrepresent or distort the statements of uh, or testimony of colleagues. Then ultimately, as we look here, as science and technology continue to advance, the importance of and value of forensic science continues to grow. Okay, So the whole main thing with, with ethics is you do your job with excellence, you do your job impartially, you do it with the right equipment, you do it with the right frame of mind for, so that justice will ultimately be served, not your particular agenda. The end.